Aloha and welcome to the screencast. We're going to talk about authentication authorization in this one. So just to briefly overview, um, authentication refers to actually um, proving who you are. So in this case, you know, if I say John at foo.com, the way that I prove who I am is by knowing the password. Um, and that enables me to get in. And then um, uh, that's authentication and then authorization is what can I actually look at once I'm there and it turns out that when you're um, Authenticated, you know to the system like now I you know the system thinks I'm actually John at foo.com because I knew the password now I'm authorized to look at these two pages add stuff and list stuff and it shows the stuff that I've actually um, Created I'm authorized to see the data that I've created on the other hand if I were to sign out and then sign in again, this time as admin at foo.com. Um, now, when I log in, I can go to this add stuff page. I'm authorized to see this page. I'm authorized to see the stuff that I've created, but I'm also authorized to see all the stuff that everybody's created. Okay. Um, and so what I want to do in this video is explain how this idea of, of um, authentication and authorization are implemented. The uh, authentication part of it is super easy. We're just going to be using um, Meteor's built-in accounts package. So um, that provides, if you look at the sign-in, um, we have a you know, Meteor login with password that takes care of, of um, the, the login process. And if we are authenticated correctly, then on the server side, we can do things like check to see um, if, um, uh, let's see, where's a good place to look for this? Um, we can see if muse, Meteor user ID not equal null, that means that we have authenticated a user in the system and we know who this person is. They have a user ID, they've supplied a password, some kind of credential that proves who they are. Okay, so um, the login stuff, you know, is pretty much boilerplate and you don't necessarily have to change it for your app very much at all. Um, where things get a little more custom is the use of the Alanine roles package. And so if I go to the um, Meteor application template react. Um, if I go to this page, you can see the Alanine calling roles package. That's what I use to implement this special user role, which enables you to be authorized to do special kinds of things. So you can read this page here to learn more about it. I use it in a very simple way, but a way that's um, you know, that might be good enough for a lot of, of your purposes. Um, so the notion here is we, uh, in the React router, we have, we first of all say, okay, there are certain routes anybody can see. The landing page, the sign in, the sign up page, you don't have to be authenticated in order to do that. On the other hand, we have some protected routes, like the list stuff, add stuff, and edit stuff pages. And those uh, use this, um, function here to ensure that you only get to see those routes in the case where Meteor user ID is not equal to null. Okay, and that just makes sure that the person's authenticated before they can see those particular routes. Then we have an admin protected route, which um, is basically very similar to this protected route with the additional constraint that not only does the person have to be logged in, but also they have to be in this role of admin. So both of these things have to be true in order for that particular page to be accessible. Okay. Um, now in the, um, in the nav bar component, so it's right here, you can see that we have um, conditionalized the display of those items 
in the menu bar, okay, add stuff, list stuff, admin, those are um, those are conditionally displayed based upon whether or not this current user property is, um, you know, is is non, uh, you know, is, is truthy. And then also we have, we check this roles, you know, the user ID roles admin to make sure that, that, or to see whether that's true or not. And then we display this menu item with the admin link in the case that, um, you know, that the user is an admin. Okay, so one of the things I want, I think it's very important to understand is that whether or not you display something in the nav bar or not, it doesn't necessarily prevent someone from just typing it in. So I'm logged in as admin, and I can go to this admin page. But consider this particular situation. I log out, and then I log in as, as uh, john at foo.com, and use this change me thing. So I'm logged in, okay? But, so there's no admin link, but look, I could just type this, right? Okay, so we want to make sure, even if that that menu item is not displayed, we want to make sure that the user doesn't somehow figure out what the URL is and just put that in, okay? And that's why we have um, kind of two places where we're doing conditionals. The nav bar is just, you know, a nice thing to make sure, the, you know, this makes sure that links aren't displayed, but it doesn't really prevent someone from typing it in some other way. And so uh, what we, in order to make sure that they can't actually access the page, that's where we have these protected routes where the router is actually going to make sure that some conditions are true before that page can be um, return to the user. Okay, so that's the um, that's the way the uh, the use of this protected route and admin protected route are to make sure that we are authorized to see a specific page. Um, and then we have this page here, which is the admin page, and here you can see that. Um, we subscribe to a special publication specific for admins and um, because we cannot get to this page unless we're an actual admin user, you know, we're okay with that subscription. That's basically how authorization and authentication work. Um, I, again, just to review, if we go back to the startup accounts um, actually, if we go back to the, to the config page in the settings.development, remember we're defining default accounts and we define this admin at food.com account with a role uh, of admin. That means that when we process our default accounts, if that particular field is present, then we add that user to the admin uh, role using the Alanian roles package. And then we check that later on. And there's really no way, unless there is a user specified in this file with the role of admin, there's no other way in the system that, that the user could get themselves added to that particular role, because it's all server-side stuff. All right, that's authorization, authentication. Um, pretty straightforward and simple and enables you to make sure that um, until people log in, they can't see data. And then once they log in, you can differentially display data depending upon their role.